We are live and I'm excited to share this amazing ball of energy with you all and share her story on how she was finally able to not feel injured anymore and get back to running. Back to running 14 <laughs> miles. And she just told me actually 15 mile uh, long run again. So we're talking about how you can dig yourself out of the running injury hole with one of our spark winners, Caitlin Brown. Thank you so much for coming on to share your story uh, with our community. Hey, Caitlin, welcome to the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, no, I'm super excited to share your story with everyone. So my question to you guys listening to this right now is have you dug yourself into an injury hole? and you don't know how to get out. Have you had pain and then just stopped running just to start back up again and have the same pain happen again? Or perhaps a new one creep back up. So have you been to your doctor or your physical therapist and they just tell you to stop running, right? These are the common things I hear all the time. And Caitlin was in our Spark Back High Touch uh, Point run coaching program. And she is going to share with you what worked really well for her during this program and how she was finally able to start running long distances again without the reoccurring injuries that she's been struggling with for a while. Um, and she was able to hit the trails and now weather's nice and she's able to get out there with some, uh, summer running with her husband. So I'm excited for this. Um, for those of you who are jumping on the live right now within our Facebook uh, live stream, can you guys uh, do me a favor and just comment live? Let us know that you're here. And if you're catching the replay, just comment and we'll be able to give you a little shout out. Um, so Caitlin, thank you so much for coming on. I'm super excited to have you here, as I mentioned. Um, let's start out with um, kind of just a little background on you know, who you are, where you're from, and just to let the know, uh, let the listeners know where you're from. Yeah. So, um, well, thanks for having me. My name is Caitlin. I am 32 and I'm actually a speech therapist here in Washington state, but not, not the beautiful evergreen side of the state. I actually live in the desert. So we have sagebrush and just big, huge dry hills. And not what people picture when they think of Washington state, I feel like. Yeah. And you, you get out your favorite type of run is what type? Oh, sorry. It kind of cut out there for a second. Um, what's my favorite type of run? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I love trail running. I come from a backpacking background. Um, my husband and I have done a couple like long distance through hikes and a lot of backpacking on the weekends. And a few years ago that changed into why don't we try to start running? Cause then we can do, you know, more mileage or we can have more time to hang out at camp. Um, so yeah, my favorite type of running is just trail running just to kind of see the outdoors. Yeah, no, that's, uh, I am not personally a trail runner myself, but I'm, I'm not opposed to it, right? Like I could see myself uh, getting into that. Um, soon. I know you're probably looking for like tempo run or speed run, but slow trail slogs are my jam. <laughs> no, no, I have a lot of clients that um, love the uh, trail run and it's definitely, you know, especially when you get to those longer distances, um, it's definitely a different element. And, you know, I have some uh, clients that, you know, working on in 50 Ks, 50 milers, one that's going to be doing a hundred miler. So yeah, some of these distances can get uh, pretty crazy. It's like a whole nother world of running, but I know yeah. there are some people in our community um, who love to trail run. Certainly. Yeah, it's definitely, um, Coming from like backpacking, it's been nice because we kind of know like what emergency things to bring and what stuff like that to bring just in case something happens. Yeah, no, I, I'm sure there's definitely the emergency <laughs> scenarios that you need to pack 
right? You need mm -hmm. to pack well, and you definitely need to have your hydration, your fuel with you, um, as well as those safety items that you mentioned. Mm -hmm. uh, so for those of you who are just jumping on here on the live stream, uh, this is Caitlin. She was in one of our uh, coaching programs, and she's really here to share her story on how she overcame some common running injuries uh, suffered by many runners um, that I do see out there. So I wanted to bring her on the show to share her story, because I think it's we always can kind of relate to others who are going through similar struggles that we are. Um, so as we go along today, feel free to drop any questions that you have for Caitlin in the uh, comment box below, and we'll do our best to kind of get to those questions as we go uh, through the interview. Um, so I'm just curious, for those of you who are on here live right now, um, do you feel like you're in an injury hole right now? Um, or are you struggling with some injuries currently uh, that you're running through? If so, just type an injury into the comment box. I'm curious to see who we have here in our uh, live audience tonight and how many of you are dealing with some injuries yourself. So let's get into this, Caitlin. So I want to kind of dive into the um, scenario that you were going through before you started working, before we started working together. Um, how was your running going at that point? Um, what was going well, what wasn't working, uh, so well? Yeah. So, um, maybe I'll kind of like back up a little bit. So I've, I, um, like I said, came from backpacking and I played soccer in high school and I've had lots of like starts and stops to my running and lots of injuries. I don't know if I've always been like the smartest runner. I was telling you in grad school, I stress fractured my foot. Um, I had trained for a marathon in high school and I rolled my ankle horribly and couldn't run the marathon. And then I've actually torn both of my ACLs skiing. So I am a injury warrior, I guess. But this kind of like injury situation was just so different. So yeah, so my running Essentially when COVID hit, you know, I was like a lot of people where I decided to get more dedicated to my running. A few years ago, we got a border collie mix and she just needed to run. So I started running pretty diligently with her. And then in March, I started following a pretty um, straightforward like marathon 50K plan. And I had a 50K, like a, a pretty easy flat 50K. So I thought it would be a good beginning one. And that was scheduled for the end of September. And then with COVID, it got canceled, but they canceled it just like two weeks beforehand. And I don't know what came over me, but I decided just to sign up for another race in November. And instead of like doing many down weeks or anything, I just kept my mileage high for me and ran that all the way pretty much until my taper for the race. So then I went and did the race and I, I felt good during the race. But then a week afterwards, when I tried to start like kind of slow jogging again, it became really apparent that I had racked up several injuries. <laughs> so that was not going well. Yeah. So what kind of injuries? So I noticed a lot of high hamstring pain on my left leg. I was having a lot of like soleus calf pain on my left leg. I had had like a right perineal, am I saying that right? Yes. Um, <laughs> perineal ankle tendon pain. Um, and I think those were like the main ones that reared their ugly heads after the race. Um, and it was a situation where I like stopped running for a couple of weeks. Cause I was like, you know, that was, that was a long race. I should just take some more time off. And then after about hmm, four to six weeks, it became pretty obvious to me that those were injuries and not just like lingering, I guess, soreness. I thought I was like, oh, it's still like a couple of weeks after the race, maybe it'll just go away. And then it didn't go away. <laughs> yeah. And I remember um, when you had reached out and I remember, you know, that perineal pain, that kind of um, ankle pain. So mm -hmm. for those um, listening right now, the perineal muscles are on the side of your lower leg. So sometimes you can get some tendonitis or tendon pain, um, that can sometimes be chronic in some people really on the outside part of your ankle. Um, so I do remember, 
I remember that. And I remember you mentioned about the hamstring um, issues. Uh, so thank you so much for sharing sharing that. Um, so what made you decide to kind of get some help on this? Like I get a lot of people that reach out and they're like, you know, things will get better and kind of you clearly wanted to take a different path. Um, what made you kind of pull the trigger on getting some guidance? Well, so I went and saw um, a couple, I mean, I don't want to like be mean to anybody, <laughs> but I went and saw a couple PTs here and I live in a small town. So there's not very many people that like specialize in running. Um, so a lot of them were very helpful, but then after like a month, the advice kind of just boiled down to, you know, maybe you should just stop running for six months. And I was like, well, I've blown both of my knees out and I was running within like, I mean, four to six months after that. I was like, I can't imagine that these kind of aches and pains are gonna keep me from running for that length of time. I just felt like there's gotta be a better solution here. <laughs> so at that point I had been like binge listening to your podcast, several other running podcasts and you had done like a call to action on one of your podcasts or something. Like, if you think you're injured. And I was like, I'm injured, Dwayne. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, I was like, well, this is a guy who's a physical therapist. He's a running coach. Like he can be the guy that helps. Like I need a specialist is how I felt. Like I felt like I needed like a specialist to give me some advice. So that's what made me pull the trigger and reach out to you. Yeah, well, I'm glad you did. And yeah, no, and I think and I don't think it's a knock, you know, um, you know, to anyone out there within the medical profession, honestly, like myself being, you know, in education and teaching other physical therapists and PT students, um, you know, we can't cover, we can't do a deep dive on everything, right? So we all yeah. have our kind of niche areas and some people mm -hmm. their niche area might be they're a generalist right and they help like everyone and mm -hmm. that's how i was in the beginning of my career um and then i found kind of sports medicine and then i found like going deeper down the niche area with working with runners and you know i i think it's just when you take that deeper dive and you're able to expand kind of um your depth in the knowledge and you know, how runners work. And then obviously it helps when you're involved in that area where you can relate and understand the trials and tribulations. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't think it, it, it's a knock. And then especially too, like you had mentioned for those that do live in small towns, sometimes you don't yeah. have as many options, right? So you don't yeah. have that, mm -hmm. that specialist in, you know, a well-populated city, right? Like you're in New York city, like you're going to be able to find a running PT in New York city, right? Multiple ones. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> but yeah. if you're in a smaller town, you might not have those options. Yeah. And I mean, I agree as a, as a speech therapist, like I obviously know like my scope of practice is massive and I've switched from like working with adults to pediatrics and now I'm kind of in the middle and yeah, it's, it's impossible to know everything about everything. That's for sure. Um, but I'm just glad we live in like a day and age where I could reach out to you. You know, I living in a small town, I still had access to someone who was more running specific, which I thought was fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I think definitely the advances in technology have helped that tremendously, right? In these last mm -hmm. like five or 10 years. Um, so that is great. And yeah. so before we started working together, were there any like hesitations that you had about kind of working together? Um, I think my main hesitation was just, I love running, but running is a hobby for me. Like I have no <laughs> goals to be a winner or to be super fast. Like I have some goals to try to go further, but it, it feels like a hobby. So reaching out to you did feel a little self-indulgent almost like, like, oh, I'm gonna spend this time and you know, these finances to invest in myself. And yeah, it felt, it felt a little self-indulgent to be honest. Um, my husband and I just bought a house. So we're really busy with the house um, and work and everything was changing with the pandemic. So I'm really glad I reached out to you, but initially it took me like two hours to be like, should I do this? Is this just me? Like, I don't know. 
indulging myself too much. Like, what, like what should I say? But obviously it worked out. So <laughs> it was worth it. Yeah. I think that that's good uh, for you to share that because I think many people feel the same. And then, yeah. you know, I find that especially like, I know, you know, you, you have your husband now, you guys just got a house, you have a dog that you mentioned um, and you don't have any kids, you know, at this time at least. Um, but I know a lot of, a lot of moms, like, especially, yeah. I think really have that dilemma, right? Like you'll do anything for your kids. Right. But like you said, you know, am I going to really, you know, invest in my own self. And sure. I think that's something hard, especially for moms to do, I, I've noticed. And I think uh, Coach Latoya, Coach Whitney, who's here on the live right now, I think would agree. And I know they're, they're very passionate about that being mother runners. And like, you do have to take care of yourself. And mm -hmm. if you don't, like, how are you going to be the best you know, person you can for your, your kids. Um, so yeah, I just want to give a little uh, shout out to some people who are jumping on here. Um, Coach Katz here, Joe's here. Thanks for joining Joe. Jean's here, another mother runner. Uh, Peter's here. Thanks for joining. Sean is here. Shauna from Texas is here. Um, Kathleen's here on the live. Kathy uh, from Australia is here. Uh, thanks for joining. Unfortunately, Peter, Peter's got some injuries. Uh, he, he can relate. Kathy as well. And Teresa as well. So I'm sorry to hear that. Um, but hopefully this information will be helpful for you guys. And April uh, has a comment relating nothing to injuries. But she said uh, she just got her first dog. Uh, we're getting one tomorrow. And you mentioned Border Collie, and that's the breed of dog that she's getting. And she picked it because they are supposed to be good dogs for running. And she wants to know, is that correct? Well, yeah, my dog is a psychopath. So tell her good luck. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, my dog is a Border Collie cattle dog mix. So she's double crazy. And she was actually rehomed multiple times before she came to us. And I, I genuinely think the running has like really helped her because those dogs just need so much activity. You know, they're meant to be herding dogs. So yeah, she's my, I don't know the last time I did a run without her. She runs with me every single time and she loves it. So yeah, it's, she'll be a great running partner. That's so exciting. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, April. So now you got a little running partner, accountability partner to get you through your runs. Um, yeah, sometimes I really don't want to get up and Zoe's like already up staring at me at like 4.50 in the morning. I'm like, okay, I guess we're going, girl. Let's do it. <laughs> And uh, Coach Lou just jumped on. Thanks for jumping on, Coach Lou. Thanks for sharing all the value you shared in our last interview. Um, and for those of you, just to give you guys a heads up, we got a special live edition interview this Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, we're going to be, if you want to learn more about speed work, I've brought in the expert for you. Uh, Mario Fraioli, um, very, very uh, big name in the running industry. Um, our friends at UCAN actually connected us. He's going to share some really good tips um, for your speed workouts. So I know summer's coming, tracks are open again. Um, a lot of you are looking to hit the track and wondering how you should be kind of programming your speed work. Uh, Mario is going to share some great tips. So tune in. Hopefully you can join us Friday. If not, always catch the replay on the podcast or on our Spark Your Training YouTube channel. Um, and Lisa's just jumped on from Nebraska. How are you, Lisa? Cornhuskers. All right. Thanks for joining us. So Caitlin, let's uh, talk, talk me through here. So working together, what were some of the things that you noticed right away that were helping or worked well? Um. I mean, the strength program was just like a game changer for me. I had been, I knew strength training was important and I have lifted and stuff like that in the past. But once I started running more and more, obvious, not obviously, because it shouldn't be obvious, but strength training fell off more and more and more. And I was doing like once a week Pilates or once a week random YouTube video. So it was just this like random smattering of strength training built in on the days that I wasn't running for whatever reason. So, I, I mean, looking back like that really probably didn't do anything. Um, so having a structured strength plan that was specific to running, I thought was just super, super helpful. Um, and 
I liked your videos that you put out because you explain like why we were doing the exercise. Like a few times I'd be like, why are we doing this? And then you'd be like, we're doing this because I was like, oh, okay, <laughs> that's helpful. Um, so yeah, I thought that was like massively helpful. The other thing that I thought was really, really helpful was being able to text you with concerns. Um, like, hey, this kind of hurts or this doesn't feel right or I felt like this. And it was, it's been so helpful to get your feedback like immediately, like this is okay, here's what you should do. Um, it gave me a lot of confidence, like, okay, this is just a little bit of pain in my shin. Like I had a little bit of shin pain when I was getting back to running and I had never had that before. Um, and my mind is automatically like, oh, I have a stress fracture. <laughs> And you're like, well, try these exercises and it'll probably help. And it like immediately went away pretty much after you gave me the exercises. So that like those kind of things were so helpful. Yeah, yeah, that is, that has been one of the things that honestly I wasn't expecting as much um, because I remember yourself and I just had a bunch of people last week as well. Same kind of scenario where it's like, hey, this is starting to hurt. And then, you know, kind of go back and forth in conversation, figure out what's actually going on, troubleshoot it. And mm -hmm. um, that's where, you know, that's where my physical therapy knowledge and, you know, doing this for 18 years can help streamline <laughs> that process versus, you know, sometimes, um, you know, with the trainer, coach, whoever, you know, it's a matter of like, okay, you're feeling this, go ahead and nice and, you know, take it easy for a day or two. Um, sure. So, uh, I think that's definitely a benefit where we can streamline and really kind of cut things off like quickly before mm -hmm. they escalate to be more serious problems where you do actually need to, you know, get treatment um, for like an injury. So I'm glad that was helpful for you um, totally. as well. So tell us, where are you now? What is, uh, how's your running going? Yeah, running is going really good. Um... I finally don't feel injured. Everything has kind of settled down. Um, I think you, I don't know if you said it in the beginning, but I did a 15 mile trail run this weekend. And so that's been my longest run since November. So that was awesome. And I felt really good during it. Um, my gauge for running now is does anything hurt? And <laughs> I sometimes get sick. And so am I getting sick? So I'll know I'll be doing things right if I'm not sick and nothing hurts. And like this weekend, the run was just perfect. It felt fantastic. And I was so excited. Um, so yeah, things are going good. Um, I'm continuing to follow the five day a week running structure kind of that you laid out. And I, I think that's the perfect amount, you know, enough that your body gets like almost a daily dose of it, but not a daily dose. You have time to recover. Yeah, I'm trying to think, were you running more than that when we, uh, before we met? You were. You're doing like Should six I days or seven? Six. I okay. never ran seven, but I was running six. Um, <laughs> and I mean, maybe eventually six would be a goal again, but right now five feels perfect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the unique thing well not so unique maybe it's not as surprising as you may think but you know some people feel that in order to invest in coaching or to you know get a coach they need to have like this big marathon goal right like yes i'm right now i'm getting a lot of people reaching out with october top goals like with races coming back and i remember when we had first talked because you were very unique in that you had a great perspective and you were like well I don't need to do a race right now. Like I just really want to get healthy and be able to build up my runs. Um, so my husband and I could like enjoy the summer outdoors, right. Mm -hmm. And be able to do what we love floor, um, all the trails in Washington state there. Um, <laughs> so yeah. Tell me how has kind of being able to get back those long runs affected your life? Yeah, it's been really good. Um, like, like you said, when I was realizing that I was just like injured in like December, I finally had this like ding, ding, ding. Like, I don't have to try to run a race this spring. Like just table that you don't need to run a race. Let's just focus on like the summer. Um, 
my husband also has the summer off. And so that was like a huge priority for me. Like we want to hike and run and camp this summer. And I don't want to be lugging my injured body around. Like I want to feel good. <laughs> um, <laughs> so in terms of like how it's affected my life, I mean, now we have a whole summer planned out of fun running. And we actually, I did this since the last time we talked, I signed up for another 50K in the fall. Nice, so, yes. I will be doing that. We, awesome. we signed up for it together and our only goal is to not get cut off by the cutoffs. So <laughs> <laughs> that's our only goal. And we're gonna, it's in um, Bend and we used to live in Bend, Oregon and we got married there. So we've been wanting to go back and this is kind of a good excuse to get to go back. So it'll be- There you fun. go. Yes. Yeah, so we're, we're excited, but I mean, my favorite thing about like trail running and stuff like that is it's a lot like hiking. It's you go for the snacks and the views, and <laughs> that's, <laughs> but you just go a little bit faster than hiking. So that's, mm -hmm. that's our, that's my new goal is to not get cut off by the cutoffs in the fall and to not have my body explode again afterwards. So take a very sensible approach to the training and everything leading up to that and continuing to do, you know, the strength training and everything that that involves. Yes. 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 I did yes. strength training today in my office on my lunch break. So awesome. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah, no, that's key. Right. And yeah, for those listening out here too, like if you guys do a program with anyone, you know, and you're like given specific exercises and you're given a specific run plan, like, it's not only to do for the short term, right? You should be doing this as part of your lifestyle, right? Because we want to be lifelong runners, right? And be able to do this for a while and stay injury free. So if there are specific exercises, whether or not you went to even formal PT, right? You saw a physical therapist for a running injury, they gave you specific exercise, your rehab exercises should become your prehab exercises. So the exercises that you're going to do for the long run, so you can continue to run long, right? <laughs> um, and then ideally those exercises would be progressed as well, right? So you don't do the same exact exercise for the next 20 years. Um, <laughs> I think about like patients that I've met, um, they're like, yeah, I started PT like 20 years ago and I've been doing this exercise every day since then. I'm like, wow, that's great because you're super compliant, which is amazing. But like you probably needed a little bit more stimulus, you know, in really progression from that. Oh yeah, you don't get <laughs> patients like that. <laughs> I can't believe somebody's done. Wow, good. Yeah. Good for them. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, it, it's interesting. Some of the stuff that I've seen, like stuff with the old stick figure pictures, I, like pull them out, and I'm like, wow, man, these things are ancient. I haven't seen these things in a while. <laughs> you know, we got we got videos now. We got YouTube. Have you heard of that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I think for me, like coming from, I mean, ACL injuries are pretty big injuries and that my left knee in particular, I was non-weight bearing for a really long time. So I did a lot of meniscus damage too. And so I don't think, like I, I got a lot of imbalances from that, I believe, but none of it really showed up until I started running all the time and doing like the repetitive motion again and again and again and again and again and like you know that I think that's when all my lingering issues arose that I didn't I didn't even know they were issues <laughs> yeah, so, yeah yeah so tell me what do you think has been most helpful working together I mean I hate to beat the same strength training drum but okay. the strength the strength program cool. I think was really really helpful and um then I think it was just help. I mean, for me personally, I needed guidance on like how to get out of this like injury hole, injury pattern that I was in because it was like, I would feel good for a week. I would run. I'd feel bad. I would run. I would feel good. I, like I just could not figure it out. And it was really helpful to have you, especially in like that first month just to have you be like, this is what you should run. And then when something hurt, it was also helpful to have you be like, here's what you can do about it, but you should still run today. And I think that was really, I don't know, eye-opening to see 
like you telling me to like, okay, it's okay to run on this. Like this isn't, I don't know. I don't know what a specific example is. Um, the shin probably is the thing that I think about the most. Because yep. if I was by myself, I probably would have just like not run again and again and again. And I now I think that really wasn't necessarily the answer for what I was going through. Yeah, yeah. And if there's anyone out there um, that's kind of on the fence about, you know, the program, any advice or recommendations you can give them? Um, yeah, I would say you should do it. <laughs> you should sign Let's up. Let's do it. <laughs> Dwayne is very helpful, everyone. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I would say if you're someone who is wanting to put in the time and get some feedback, and follow a structured plan, then you should do it. <laughs> That's, cool. Yeah. Cool. No, thank you for sharing that. I appreciate that. So I feel like I'd be remiss if I didn't put out like a little call to action because you said that was a difference maker for you. So you maybe there's like Caitlin 2.0 out there who's listening right now during their run and they're struggling with constant okay. injuries and they don't know what to do for strength training, <laughs> for running, um, and they need some guidance um, with their running and strength programs. In case you guys didn't know, I do help runners just like Caitlin all the time with our coaching program called our Spark Back uh, program to become a lifelong injury-free runner. Um, so what I do really with this program is combine what I've done um, as a physical therapist in my clinic uh, throughout my career, as well as the knowledge of run coaching and combine that kind of those two skill sets um, virtually. And we do that by performing a run body performance assessment, really to establish your current running mechanics, your current movement patterns, what's your strength, flexibility, and then really training pain points and stick and I systematically kind of take you through four distinct phases where we really work on restoring normal movement patterns for running and then rebuilding, retraining, and then get you to crush it level. Uh, so for Ken, that was getting back to double digit runs, getting up to more than half marathon distance on her long runs. And uh, she was able to do that and get back to, you know, what she loves is being outside and uh, out on the trails. Um, so if you are frustrated runner out there and you been told to stop running and you really, you know, want to be able to run and you want to finally get rid of these aches and pains, um, reach out. If you're here on the live, just type in coaching into the comment box. And if you're listening on the podcast, um, check out the show notes. You'll see a link to hop on my calendar where you and I can discuss to see if the program's a good fit for what you're looking for and for your needs. Um, so Caitlin, we are down to the final stretch here. So this is like the uh, last question that we ask all our guests on the podcast. Um, so I guess uh, my question, since we're talking about like kind of reoccurring injuries and injury hole, is if you can change like one thing about the misconception of getting back to running, even though you've been injured, what would that be? Ooh, misconception about getting back to running. Um, well, from... Hmm. I think <laughs> I'm trying to think of what Stump I would say. <laughs> I'm stumped. Well, I feel like I have like eight different answers and I need to choose the best one for you. No, I feel like if you look on like the internet or common knowledge is just if something hurts, you should just stop running. And of course, you have to do that sometimes, right? But for lots of things, I feel like the answer is maybe modify your running and let's do some rehab exercises to get you better. So I would say the most, I would say the myth is you don't always have to stop running. You can get better while, I feel like I actually got better while I was running, which blew my mind. I thought I was gonna, you know, have to stop running to get better. And I mean, I continued running the whole time and now I'm better, I would say. <laughs> Yeah, no, that is awesome. And I love hearing that because again, that's like literally the mission of creating our healthy runner community um, is to share that information because it does take a while for evidence, for research, for practice to kind of translate 
to the public, right? So mm -hmm. hopefully I have been successful at getting that message out. And hopefully those of you who are listening and you've been listening to multiple episodes, um, you're kind of getting that message that you don't always need to stop running. And quite often um, you actually do yourself a disservice when you do shut things down, um, especially for an extended period of time. Um, so like Caitlin said, modifying your activity level is usually um, what your body needs because movement is medicine, right? So that can help heal our injuries that we are struggling through. So for those of you who are here on the live on Facebook, can you guys do me a favor? Smash that like love button. Thank Caitlin for coming on, um, having her share her story with us uh, this evening. Um, I appreciate you taking the time, Caitlin, and I appreciate all of you guys for tuning in, um, taking time out of your evenings as always. And hopefully we were able to keep you guys company who are listening on the podcast uh, during your runs. Um, remember every Every week we go live within our Healthy Runner Facebook group. So check out our events tab to find out the latest topic, the latest running injury tip that is going to help keep you active, healthy, and just keep running. So thank you so much again, Caitlin. I appreciate you coming on. Yeah. Thanks for having me. All right. And guys, until next time, we will be talking to you very, very soon. All right. Have a great evening. Bye. Bye.